Hi there and welcome. In this video, we will explore how we can create relational data using DBIC. Let's get started. Now, there's a couple of ways how you can create relational data and it really depends on your relationships. For example, in the previous videos, we explored relationships such as has many or has one and also such relationships as belongs to. Now, let's start by exploring how we can create relational data for has many or has one relationships. And in our database setup where we have users and nodes, if we check the user, we are going to see that there's a relationship which is has many and that points to nodes. And again, that makes sense because we can have one user and that one user can have many nodes. So that's why the relationship is has many. Now, how we can actually create relational data is that we first need to access all result set, such as SEMA, and we access the result set. And in this case, we want to access the user result set and we call the method create. On create, we provide anonymous hash ref, and the first data type we provide there is the data we want to create for our user table. Now in this case, if we check the database and go to user table, so in our nodes database, user, we're going to see that the main thing we really are after is the username and type doesn't really matter. So let's just set the data for the username, such as username. So that is our key, which represents the column. And let's just call this user, user has many. Now the question is how we can create multiple nodes. Now in order to do that, we need to use the relationship name to create the nodes. As we looked at the user before, the relationship is called nodes. So what we do is we provide a key, which is nodes, and Debic is going to be smart enough to figure out that we're actually referencing the relational table for the nodes. And we want to point that to array ref. And in this array ref, we want to provide hash refs. And the hash refs are going to be key value pairs where the keys, again, are columns for our nodes table and the values are the values we want to insert for those columns. So if we go to the database and see what we have in nodes, we already know that we have primary key for the node ID, then the user ID, which is mandatory, we need that. And then we have description and importance. So here we can say that we want to create one node with description, let's say node from and let's copy that username, which is user has many. And let's just call this note one from user has many. And we can say that importance equals one. And let's just copy this and create another note to see that we can create many notes using this pattern. And here we can say note two from user has many. And let's just say this is importance number two. All right, let's add semicolon here for sake of consistency. We save the script and let's run this now as usual with dbic underscore trace for SQL debugging, then Perl, include our libraries, and then we run the script, which is script PL. And what we're going to see that a couple of things are going to happen. The first one is we're starting a transaction. We're inserting a new user, which is user has many. And then we can see that we have two follow-up insert statements for the previous user ID that we created, which is going to be user with ID 25. And then we have the values that we provided, which is the description and the importance one and description number two and the importance with value two. All right, so if you check the database, Let's refresh the PHP my admin interface and let's see what we have here. So we have two nodes now with user ID 25. If we go to user and this is our newly created user with username, user has many. All right, so that's how you create data for relationships that have has many or has one. Now, what if you wanted to create data for relationships that are denoted with belongs to? So if you go to note result, we're going to see that we have relationship of user that's denoted as belongs to, because as we know, one too many nodes belongs to user. The question becomes how we can reverse this creation and create the nodes first and then the user. Well, technically, you would still need to create a user first and then the nodes, but through DBIC, you can actually create the relational data first and then denote the data for the primary table. So let's reverse this. Instead of accessing the user result set, let's say we want to access the node result set. And what we provide here is not the user data first, but we're going to provide the node data first. In this case, we could say that we want to create a node with description and we can say node from, let's choose username such as user belongs to. We can also add our importance. And so importance, and let's just say it's one. And now for relational data, as before, similar to the notes, we provide the user key and instead of providing array ref, we provide a hash ref. And now in this hash ref, we provide the user data. In this case, we just want to provide the username, which is going to be user belongs to. Well, I misspelled that, but that doesn't really matter. But for sake of consistency, let's update it. All right, so let's go to console and rerun our script. 
What we're going to see now, first of all, Divic is going to select from the user table to make sure that the user doesn't exist. Now, in our case, the user doesn't exist. So what we're going to see then is that we start transaction. We are selecting from the user again, which seems a little bit strange, but I think this is something specific to Dbic. Honestly, I think something is going a little bit wrong here with Dbic because we shouldn't be selecting from user again, but hey, it is what it is. So we're selecting from user again, and then we can see that we are inserting into user table, which is our new user, and after that, we are inserting our note record. As I said before, in the pattern using Dbec, you can say that you want to create a node first and then you want to create a user. But in reality, of course, you do need to create the primary entity first, which is our user and then the node data. And this is what we can see in our SQL being debugged. We are creating a user and then we're creating the node. All right, so we looked at how we can also create data for belongs to relationship. Now, what if we want to create data in bulk? Now, we can do that through Dbec as well. And as we already saw in the previous videos, we can use a method which is called populate. So I'm just going to comment out everything that's in the create method and instead on our result set, which we actually going to reference the user result set, we're going to call the populate method. Now in that populate method, we provide array ref and in that array ref, we provide hash ref. And this hash ref structure is going to be similar as we saw with the first example, which used the has many. So what we want to say is, for example, we want to create a user with username. Let's call this bulk one. And then we want to create notes. And for notes, again, we provide array ref. And here, I'm just going to copy everything that we commented out here. So I don't repeat myself. And let's going to align this a little bit. So, well, first of all, let's uncomment this, then align. And we can say not one from bulk user one and not two from bulk one. Same importance, doesn't really matter. Let's just set commas for sake of consistency. And since this is a populate method, we of course can create multiple structures as such. So we can copy the first structure for creating a user with username bulk one and add another structure. And we can say that we also want to create a user with username bulk two and two nodes as well for bulk user two. So not one from bulk two and the same here, not two from bulk two. All right, so if we save this, and let's just remove this comment because we don't need the structure anymore. Save the script. Let's close the console so we can see what happens now. Run the script. And we're going to see that similar as before, we start a transaction. The first thing that is going to happen, we're going to insert into user. You're not going to see multiple insert statements because as we saw with the populate method, you're actually inserting data in bulk. So you're running a list of SQL statements to insert multiple users. And here, of course, we can't really see what we're inserting. This is kind of placeholder saying bulk insert. And afterwards, we can see that we seem to be inserting only two nodes. But if we explore this a little bit in more detail, we're going to see that both of these statements have bulk inserts. And these bulk inserts represent the first populate method nodes, where this structure is going to be translated into the bulk insert for user one. And for the second statement is the same thing. We are inserting nodes for bulk user 2 and SQL is going to be in the second placeholder. All right, so if you go to phpMyAdmin, refresh the page, we're now going to see that we have our previous data for user has many and user belongs to. And here we can see that we now have two bulk users with username bulk1 and bulk2. And if you check the nodes, we're going to see that we now have four nodes. So two nodes for the bulk user with ID 27 and two nodes for bulk user 2, user ID 28. And this is how you can insert data in bulk. All right, so that's it for this video. We looked at how we can insert relational data for has many or has one relationships, also for the belongs to relationship. And finally, we explored how we can insert data in bulk. I hope you found this video useful and I'll see you at the next one.